Hey, Internet, Harris here. I want to give you 10 to 15 tips for the iPad, whether you have something small like the iPad mini, something bigger like the iPad Pro, or something in between like the budget iPad. Doesn't matter the size of the iPad, doesn't matter how much you paid for it, these are going to be some tips to get the most out of your really nice device. Now this video is going to be centered around my philosophy of technology and you can check out a video I made talking about this idea. But basically, uh, it's going to be centered around using the iPad to its utmost potential while decreasing the distraction to allow you to actually use it as a beneficial piece of technology in the classroom and while studying. Okay, so I'm going to divide this into three sections. One is tips to increase concentration. Secondly, to increase productivity. And third, miscellaneous tips and tricks. So right off the bat, is a feature called guided access and guided access basically ensures that when you're in an application you're not tempted to slide down to check notification center to swipe up to check your dock and see if you have any badges or notifications or just to leave your app to check your messages do anything like that so first we can go ahead and go to settings to enable this so if you go to accessibility and scroll down to guided access and simply turn that on and you make sure you have your accessibility shortcut turned on as well then when you are in an application and you triple click your power button, if you're on an iPad Pro or Air, or if you have an older iPad with a home button, you'll triple click the home button. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll enable guided access. And then you can set your parameters. So I usually leave on the buttons and pretty much everything actually. And then you can put a nice time limit. So if you don't know, then you can just kind of put whatever. But if you want to study for a certain amount of time, like say you want to do one hour of studying in Notability app, you go ahead and do that. And then you click start. And then you go ahead and set a passcode. And now when you try to go to your dock, you cannot. When you try to go to your notification center, you cannot. Basically, there's, there's nothing you can do. Again, that is guided access. And then you triple click again. And you can exit. Secondly is a cool little trick in the clock app. So say you want to do a 30 minute study session while you can use guided access, perhaps you're going to be going back and forth between different applications uh, and you want that flexibility. You can actually go into the clock app on your iPad, set a timer to whatever you want. And for the sound, instead of doing an actual alert, you can do stop playing. Now what's going to happen when this is over is that it's basically just going to lock your iPad on you. It's just going to be kind of another slap in the face that says, okay, you're done. It takes a little bit more willpower because you can easily just go back in without any friction, but it does give you that kind of reminder that says, okay, done. Just make sure that if you ever use that timer again for waking up from a nap or something that you do turn a sound on or else it will not wake you up. Okay. And third, this one might be pretty radical, but it's actually just turning off iMessage and maybe even deleting the mail app or um, logging out of the mail app on your iPad, except for maybe one specific for uh, your school email for those important alerts. Now, I know this might seem kind of crazy and that one of the big features of having an iPad is to get iMessage and FaceTime and, and these features. But I knew a lot of people in college who actually turned off iMessage on their Mac and their iPad because they found it way too distracting. And at the end of the day, this is a technology that you have on your phone, which is probably going to be with you anyway, and you don't really need it if you think about it um, and you think big picture. You don't really need iMessage and you might not even need mail on your iPad. I don't have the mail app installed on my iPad, so I go to gmail.com when I want to check my email. Totally fine. So next, now that you're a little bit more focused and have a little bit better concentration, let's get into increased productivity. ShareSheet is your best friend. Uh, this gives you the ability to send any type of document from one app or one part of your iPad to another. So if you want to import something into your note-taking application, such as Notability or GoodNotes, you can easily do that. If it's from your school system, you can save it to your Files app, sync it to your iCloud, pick it up on your iPhone later, save things into Google Drive. There's just a lot of things you can do with the share sheet. You also have the ability to rearrange your share sheet. If you slide to the very end and you click the three dots, you get the option to add or remove things from the sheet as well as reorder. So this is a really great way of making sure that you have what you want. Now, one specific really handy feature of the share sheet would be for converting documents to PDF. Now, I often find myself with Google Docs or um, uh, Microsoft Word documents, and the iPad doesn't seem to give you an easy way to convert it to a PDF. And if you want to edit something or annotate it with your Apple Pencil, you're going to need to turn it into a PDF. And you also, with a PDF, you're able to easily fill in things with Apple Finder or Apple Preview. So if you want to actually convert a document from really anywhere to a PDF, you're going to want to go down to the share sheet 
of that document. So you can see I did it from up here. Uh, I could also have tapped this button and you wanna hit print. And once you hit print, you'll see the share sheet up top again, and that will now save it as a PDF. This is an awesome feature. Uh, I wish I, I knew about this earlier because sometimes you just want to sign a document and you don't know how to do that because it's a Word doc. This is a very easy way to turn that into a PDF. Super handy. Next, if you're taking notes with the Apple Pencil, there's actually several options. Apple has, I think now, two options if you have one of the iPads with the magnetic side, as well as the original one. There's a Logitech Crayon or Crayon. Um, that also is really good and a bit cheaper. And then you can also get third-party ones for even cheaper. Uh, this is one from ESR and actually magnetically attaches to the iPad, which is pretty sweet. Um, and it still works for moving around. Uh, and it does charge, and this is like 30 bucks. So you don't have to spend the 100 or 120 on an Apple Pencil if you don't want to. There are cheaper ones that don't have all the bells and whistles, don't have the double tap, uh, but are still really nice and just cheaper and still pretty solid experiences. And also, if you are doing a lot of note-taking, a matte screen protector goes a long way, uh, especially for reducing the fingerprints on the screen because fingerprints can be a really big issue. And when you're taking notes with your Apple Pencil, you end up basically just like, slicing through your fingerprints and you can just kind of see your whole notes for the day written in your fingerprints when you turn your screen off and paper like is kind of the go-to for these matte screen protectors like i said it reduces the glare and the fingerprints but it also gives you a really nice texture when you're writing and a really nice sound and this is actually their new paper like 2.1 with swiss-based manufacturing and better nano dots distribution for better visibility and clarity when using the screen protector. So if you're looking for paper like, I'll leave a link down in the description, check them out. They're kind of, like I said, the go-to paper like experience and matte screen protector for your iPad. Next, okay, this is one that I really, really, really wish I had in undergrad and it's text-to-speech services, but more specifically, uh, kind of modern text-to-speech because Google Translate, for instance, has always been able to read you something. So if you wanted to copy in a, a long document, it could read it to you, but it sounds like a robot. But these modern text-to-speech services, you can upload uh, documents, EPUBs, um, PDFs, kind of any type of format or just plain text, and it will read it to you in a really human-sounding voice. And for instance, here's just a book that I downloaded for free from Gutenberg Press. Two weeks leave of absence to find that my patrons had arrived. So here's ago. Barack Obama reading this. Quite different from the which I had expected. The General Ivy Coltley greeted me in rather. So also Snoop Dogg and several other voices. To luncheon, they were expected that day of Monsieur Mizenzov, French lady, and an Englishman. Whenever money was at hand, a banquet of Monsieur Mizenzov was always given. Polina Alexandrovna, on seeing me, inquired why I had been so. Now, I particularly there. like this because there are some things for class that are really boring or maybe a little bit difficult. And I find myself just getting stuck. I can't get past that first page or that second page. I keep rereading. Throwing it into here allows me to kind of increase the speed, just hear it, go through it. And it just gives me better footing, gives me a little bit of traction when I'm reading. And then maybe I can go back in and, and read it myself with my own eyes. But I mean, for a lot of human history, people listen to things instead of reading it with their eyes. So this is actually a, a very natural um, and understandable way of learning um, and digesting information. Now, is the 2x speed natural? Probably not, but can your brain handle it? Absolutely, like you can handle even faster than 2x. The big point would just be that you're actually focusing. Now, there's a lot of services that do provide this feature. I've been using Speech5, paying for it out of pocket, not sponsored, um, and that's been working really well. There's a few others, and if you want to see a video where I compare kind of all the best services, let me know, I'd be interested in doing that. They are a bit expensive, so they're not for everyone. And unfortunately, there's not really a free or a super cheap or a one-time payment option from any of these companies that also do a good job with their uh, text-to-speech. Um, some of them that are free or one-time payment sound like robots and they're kind of just not useful, but I might make a video comparing the best options. Now, in the same vein, if you're ever reading an article uh, or basically anything that you can find online that isn't in a separate application, Reader View is a really great way of getting rid of ads, getting rid of distractions, and getting a really readable, digestible, and clean, minimal um, page to read your documents. So if you hold down the AA text in Safari, it'll pull up the reader view automatically, which basically takes out all of the elements from the website, uh, takes it all out and leaves just the text and images that are actually part um, of the web page. But not just that, Apple has actually added a really handy reader mode in this, that way you can listen again to your documents in a pretty natural sounding Siri voice. 
and you can go in and pause. You can also skip forward and back and change the speed. So I'll make it Tick on the touch screen actually makes sense. Intuitive design is safe design. Dieter Bone, August 17th, 2017, at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Cars have become expensive rolling gadgets, full of screens, speakers, and sensors. But are they actually good gadgets? So I really love this feature for just getting through articles that I otherwise would probably start reading it distracted. So if you have ADHD or you're an auditory learner like I am, uh, it's great to just listen and it helps me get through a lot more news articles or different things that I, I want to read um, that I don't actually get around to because I get distracted by long web pages. Okay, now miscellaneous tips. So if you ever find yourself in the need to decrease the size of a PDF, I'm not sure if this works for other file types. I know it does for PDFs. Um, there is a way of doing that actually. You long tap on a document and you click optimize and then you have the ability to optimize the size which will shrink it. Um, I had 11 megabyte file shrink down to about four megabytes um, and from there you can upload it. So in case you have a document that's too big, you can do that optimization right from there. Next, free books are really easy to get on uh, your iPad. Now, I'm speaking of legal means here. There's a few different services. There is Project Gutenberg, which is really handy. Um, you can browse that catalog, and they're mostly classics, things that have been um, kind of archived public domain. And then you can download those in several different formats. So that's a really good option. There's also archive.org, which you can rent, and some things you can download uh, and borrow um, different books. They're kind of like scans, library uploads. Um, I've used that a couple of times. I know other people that use that more often. And then Libby is a great one. Uh, you sign in with your library account and then you can download books and audiobooks and magazines uh, and borrow them on your iPad for, I think, two weeks and you can also renew them. So there's lots of ways of getting uh, additional books for free on your iPad and, of course, textbooks and other things like that. Okay, next. Uh, images are a great way of enhancing your documents um, and your note taking on the iPad. Now, typically, I would recommend using a PNG image. That way, it will hopefully have these checker boxes around the background, and then you could just copy or drag an image right into your note taking application, drop it in, and it will have no background. So you can see it blends in right with the background, but sometimes that's not an option. And so, if you have an image like this one, you can see the background remains white. And if I drag this over, you can see that it does not blend in with the background. But now on iOS 17, an alternative, if you hold on to an image and click copy subject, it'll actually just copy the foreground or what the AI determines is the subject. And then you can paste it into whatever document you're using and it won't have a background. And this is a really handy feature. And then finally, there's this really cool feature in Notability specifically. So if you go on an image and you click the three dots, and you can click Convert to Ink. It'll actually do its best at turning what you have into ink. So sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. Neither of these are great examples. And we'll try to turn this to ink. And you see this look, looks much cooler. So sometimes, sometimes it works pretty well, sometimes it doesn't. But those are a few cool features of really sprucing up your notes using the copy subject and turn to ink. We want to make something into a fun little drawing like that. So those are the iPad tips I have for students. I hope some of those are helpful. Let me know. And I also hope that you can kind of develop your own philosophy of technology to both enjoy being a student, enjoy studying, take the benefits of technology, but without being overwhelmed by the distraction that it presents. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.